Hey guys, it's Miss M. And today I am doing a small little video about, you know, our graphic organizer that we use in the classroom and have been using since August of the school year. And as you know, we are redoing that cell phone essay um, this week because I said in the classroom that, you know, we when we come back from spring break, it will be, we'll finish it, it'll be graded for quarter four. And I know some of you did turn it in. And unfortunately, you know, as the situation is, we are not in the classroom anymore. And I want to make sure that we are still working on creating great, beautiful essays. So this is one of the essays that we're going to do. And so we're just going to go step by step about each part of our graphic organizer, what should look and expect, and little things that we need to create that powerful, strong, good essay. So as you can see, I have my CI, which is our controlling idea. Our controlling idea should have our topic and the main idea of what this essay is going to be about. So the topic is going to be about cell phones. The main idea is whether or not you're should or you are saying that they should be allowed in the school slash classrooms or they should not be allowed in the school slash classrooms. So right away, your controlling idea, I should know whether or not you are for or against this opinion essay. If you are for it, you're going to say something that I believe, I think, I feel that cell phones should be allowed in the schools or the classrooms. If you don't agree with it, you should say something about how I do not believe, I do not feel, I do not like the idea of having cell phones in the classroom. I should know within this controlling idea what your opinion, what your stance is on this argument. That's all I need to know, whether or not you are for or against this. Now we have our main idea one. The main idea one is the next paragraph. What is that paragraph all gonna be about? If you are for cell phones, what is the reason that, what is the main reason, what is the main idea that, that you're gonna talk about? Okay, if you are for against, if you are against it, what is that main reason? What is that thing, what is telling you that no, they should not be allowed? Okay, when you decide what that type of main idea is, you can move on to your evidence and elaboration. Now, sometimes, like I told you in the classroom, it's easier to find the evidence first, then help you figure out your main idea. If you have two pieces of evidence, because we need two, and they're similar, try to come up with what the, those two pieces of evidence have in common. And that could easily help you figure out your main idea right here. Okay, if not, you can figure out the main idea, then you can move on to your evidence. Remember, when we use our evidence, we need two pieces of evidence each different evidence from the sources, okay, that will support this main idea right here. You don't want your piece of evidence to talk about how cell phone can t be bullying and cause cheating because those two things don't have in common if you're talking about how cell phones are a distraction in the classroom. If your main idea is all about how cell phones are a distraction in the classroom, your evidence needs to support that main idea. So talking about how it causes bullying doesn't really support a distraction. And cheating, yeah, it can be a distraction, but it's not a strong enough piece of evidence to support that. So you wanna make sure your two pieces of evidence are really strong in supporting your main idea. Now remember with our evidence, you could cite it. You need to cite it from the source. I need to know where you're getting it from. You can either directly quote it from the source itself or you can paraphrase. Remember when you paraphrase, you take the wordage that the author put, and then you're gonna add some other words, your own personality to it, and make it your own. Now, if you cite it directly, quote it from the source, it needs to be in quotation marks. It needs to be word for word exact. You cannot have missing words. You cannot add in words. If you are quoting it directly, it needs to be the exact line of it. And then you put end it with a quotation mark. Now we have our elaboration. Now your elaboration is really telling the reader and explaining to the reader how th these two pieces of evidence support this main idea. So, you know, we talk about using the words like imagine and all that. You, like to, you guys like to use the word imagine. Try to think a little outside of the box. You know, how does a cell phone in the classroom um, show a distraction? How is it... A distraction. Well, cell phone could be a distraction because the cell phone could go off in the classroom disrupting the teacher's lesson. And if they're taking a test, it's going to make a loud noise and it's going to cause students to stop, stop their focus 
and get off task. That is elaboration. All I said was elaboration and I talked about how a cell phone going off in the classroom can be a, a distraction and how it ties in. So these three things go hand in hand, okay? Your elaboration supports and explains your evidence, which supports your main idea. Now we have our second main idea, which is a whole different paragraph, meaning it's not following, we're not adding more to this. We are done and we are going on to a different, another um, point to be made. And then after that, we do the same thing, our evidence and our elaboration. Remember when we use our evidence and we elaborate, it goes evidence first, then that elaboration. Evidence second, then that piece of elaboration. We want to explain our evidence because our readers don't know these sources. They didn't read these sources. So our job is to kind of explain it to the readers exactly how the pieces of evidence are good or bad or, and supports our main ideas. And after that, we have our topic in our main idea, which is basically our idea that controls. We are using our topic in our main idea from up here, from our controlling idea, but this is where you reword that controlling idea. You make it, you use stronger words. You leave that lasting impression on the reader. You want that reader to be like, wow, that was a super essay. I really understood what they were. So you're gonna use a lot, some of your stronger vocabulary terms. You're gonna use a lot of our tricks and our traits. Now, speaking of tricks and trades, remember we talked about personality. Adding a lot of you or adding a good amount of you into the essay to make it go from a standard, typical essay to giving to, for us as a reader to say, wow, I kind of knew a little bit more about this person. Adding those, oh my gosh, wow, can you believe it? Those types of wordage really, really expresses and really elevates an essay. And don't forget your transitional words and phrases and indentation my friends indentation so this is the graphic organizer you're going to use it to help ex uh, organize your thoughts organize your ideas then you're going to move on tomorrow you're going to write your rough draft and your parents if you want let your parents read it and tell your parents their job is to only edit and help you with their misspelled words they are not fixing anything else for you but the misspellings okay so make sure that they are doing that and then on Friday, you will get to type it or reprint it um, and then send it to me. All right, guys, until the next video. Bye.